Wow, what can I say about my next guest? A powerful 28 year old woman who is doing amazing things, investing in businesses in Africa. After a successful career in banking, she was tapped on the shoulder to come and join this small but purposeful impact fund. She is now, in only three and a half years, risen up to managing director and partner. A fantastic story of persistence, perseverance, and just strength and her faith has carried her a really, really long way. I'm so excited about this conversation. I can't wait for you to watch it. Welcome to Visibility, a show that shines a light on the marketplace successes of women of color, in particular black women in the UK. And I'm super excited about this episode because <laughs> I am here with just really a very, very inspirational woman, um, a young woman, but just has a lot of miles under her. So Adesua. Welcome Hello. to our set. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to get into this. Um, so uh, broad question. Yeah. Just, I guess, for our audience, just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, just so we can start getting to understand who you are and what makes you you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, I'm Adesu Akumbo. Uh, I'm 28 years old. Uh, I am, <laughs> I am uh, the managing director and partner of a company called Syntaxis Capital Africa, uh, which is a private equity firm that invests in Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Kenya, uh, and some other select countries in mm -hmm. sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and I was born in Nigeria, born okay. in Lagos, uh, originally from Edo State, uh, Benin City to be, to be exact. <laughs> Both of my parents are Benin. Um, and uh, born in Nigeria, went to primary school in Nigeria and moved to England when I was 11. Okay. Um, I'm one of four people from my mom and my dad, okay. uh, the youngest of those four. Uh, and when I moved to England in 11, Oh, at 11, uh, we were, I was in boarding school, okay. uh, and it was actually quite tough because uh, being in boarding school, you know, you're away from, not only was I making a transition from being a day student to being a boarder, yeah. but I was moving from Lagos to, to a different yeah, country, yeah, yeah. so it was, it was pretty tough at the beginning, uh, but thank God I had my brother and my sister mm -hmm. in the same school, so that kind of helped to, helped to kind of soften the blur as it was. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, you know, made my way through school uh, in, in, in Kent, which is outside of London, uh, and, uh, and went to Bristol to study economics. Uh, and then kind of, I wouldn't say I fell into banking because I was one of those people that knew when I was 15 years old that I wanted to go okay, into banking. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'll let you finish and I'll ask you why, okay. Uh, but, then, but then went into banking, got my first job with JP Morgan. Right. Uh, and then, uh, and then, yeah, and then actually, actually, you know, before JP Morgan, I got my first job at Lehman Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, and then I moved to JP Morgan, and then, yeah, and, and now I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, it's been an interesting journey, okay. for sure. Uh, I never thought I'd be where I am mm -hmm. um, right now, um, but yeah, I think it's, um, I, I just, I thank God that, yeah. I'm, I, that I am where yeah. I am, I guess. <laughs> So at 15, I mean, what most 15-year-olds are doing is not clearly thinking about their careers in banking. Um, how were you exposed to banking? Why, why do you think you knew it was bank? What was it about it that, you know, attracted you? So I've, I've kind of, throughout my kind of childhood, I've always been someone that's been interested in money. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and my name actually means center of wealth. So okay. that's what I do, so I mean, center okay. of wealth. So I've okay. kind of, I've always had the nickname in my household of being like the household accountant right. or so you know, the, household, the, uh, the household treasurer or something okay. like that. Uh, and when I was in secondary school, I'll never forget this. I actually, there was, I, I took on a project and I started selling lyrics in school. <laughs> so I would go home, print out lyrics to a song, and go to school and sell them. And people actually so not, bought not, this not the song that you wrote, but <laughs> no, 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 like, like, like the, okay. the you know, the poppin song of that, of that, of that week. And I actually sold. So I've always kind of been someone that thought about money, thought about making money. Uh, and when we, when it was time to kind of choose AS subjects. Yeah. 
uh, economics kind of stood yeah. out to me because this was some this was a of subject course, where yeah. you know you're thinking about you know how decisions are influencing the world mm -hmm. and uh, and when I did more research into economics and started talking to people in, um, that were older than me and like, well, what kind of jobs can you get with, in, um, yeah, with you know, yeah. an economics A-level? I said, well, have you thought about banking? Uh, and back then, you know, Gold, Goldman Sachs, mm. um, uh, Lehman Brothers back in the day, they used to have events for people yes. that were doing A-levels. So, so I applied and I said, oh, well, let me go and see what it is. Yeah. And I will never forget, I went to 120 Fleet Street. Yeah, um, my office right now. <laughs> um, and, I, and I was just surrounded and they were talking to, you know, us 15, 16, 17 year olds about banking. And I just, be, I remember seeing this woman and she was just, she was so elegantly dressed and she was, you know, so smart. And I, yeah. and I saw, you know, the office and yeah. it was, I was just in awe of my surroundings. Yeah. And I was like, wow, well, if this is what this industry this is, is what like. This is what I want, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this is what I want. I want to be surrounded by very, very smart people, but also, you know, these are women that are here as well. It's not just men. Um, so, yeah, from that day on, I just did everything in my power yeah. to make sure that I got an internship in yeah. one of the investment banks. Uh, and thankfully, in my first year of uni, I did a Lehman Brothers Spring Week. Uh, and they said, you know, we don't normally give internships to people that are in their first year of yeah. uni, but I'm very, someone that's very persistent. <laughs> So I did my cover letter, yeah. I was hounding the HR women, and they were like, okay, fine, come in for an interview. Yeah. Uh, and they gave me an internship, and awesome. I think I was, the, I, was, I was 17 at the time, or 18 at the time, uh, and I got my first job in an investment bank, yeah. and it was a paid internship for three months, um, and I was like, wow, though this is definitely, yeah. now this would just confirm that this is the industry that I want to go into. Yeah. But I'm sure you know the story, yeah. September 2008. Mm. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in New York on holiday with the family and I put on the news and I'm like, what? Wow, yeah. <laughs> Lehman Brothers is no Brothers, longer yeah, with us. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how it all started. It was, yeah. it was going to that Goldman office, hearing these amazing smart people yeah. speaking, um, you know, and just being really you know, at the top of their game. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is definitely an industry I want to be in. Um, awesome. And I, did the, I, got, I managed to get the internship and then the rest is really history yeah. from there. So... You, you're 11, you come into this country, and I mean, and I experienced that as well, but I came in m much later. I came in at 16 or, yeah, 16. Okay. Um, what was it like having been surrounded by a lot of people who looked exactly like you, black, that, and then moving, like, to boarding school? Yeah. And suddenly you're like, I mean, yeah, you see white people, you probably see them on TV, you probably <laughs> travel, and you tra I travel quite often. Yeah. Um, did that mean anything to you? It did. And did it impact sort of your worldview? It did. It did. Because if I, 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 I'm so thankful that I had my brother and my sister in the same school because yeah. in, my, in my class, I was the only black girl. So, and actually that, that, that was a consistent trend all the way up yeah. to upper sixth, yeah. where I was the only black girl yeah. and the only Nigerian yeah. in, my, in, my, in my set. So... It was, it was, it definitely took some adjusting yeah, because, yeah. you know, you come from Lagos where, you know, it's everyone, yeah. <laughs> you're all the same, you're all, you all understand yeah. your cultural, um, you know, uh, differences and nuances to going to a situation where you, you're kind of having to be adopted into a new culture yeah. um, and trying to navigate that mm -hmm. at such a young age. Did you feel like you had to like code switch at any point, as they call it, like basically make yourself less? African or less? Well, you know, you have to start learning for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how your accent has changed. You have to start learning for now. And, uh, I, remember, <laughs> I remember that was in the first couple of years. Thank God that we used to travel for yeah. summer. You know? So it's like, you know, that, you know, you have to, you can't start, you can't talk yeah. the way you were talking before. Um, so yeah, so th there definitely had to be some shifts in, yeah. uh, in how you, you know, interacted yeah. and and I think, you know, because I was, because I was so young, yes. um, I, I you adapted. Could be, yeah, you could uh, I, be molded. Exactly, I could that, be molded. Yeah. Um, but I'm thankful for those experiences because I think, you know, it, through, throughout, throughout boarding school, it made me very, very independent. Mm -hmm. It made me, I think, it, it gave me a lot of the attributes that I have yeah. today in my position. Um, uh, and I actually say to my husband that our kids are going to go to boarding school, yeah. but just because just of so the they can have the experience, yeah, exactly, yeah. just so they have the same experience I hope that he's I on have. Board. <laughs> well, I'm getting, he's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting there. But you know, I, I I managed to navigate my way through school. 
Uh, I managed to become the first black um, female head of school in the oh, school. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, it Look was it, it was it was it was definitely a journey, but I think one that I'm much better off yeah. for today. Yeah. And when you went to Goldman, I mean, you talked about the really elegant woman you saw. I'm guessing. She was not a woman of color. <laughs> guessing. Actually, she was actually an Indian woman. Okay, so she, she was, was a woman Indian. of color. Yeah, she, was, she wasn't a black woman. Yeah, she, she, was wasn't, a woman she wasn't a black woman, but she was an Indian woman. Yeah. And I and I remember, you know, they had this massive conference room and they had microphones on the desks. Yeah. And, and I was just like, wow, this is this is somewhere where, you know, these decisions being made in this building yeah. is influencing financial markets yeah. all over the world. Yeah. So I felt I, I felt like I wanted to be part of that yeah. in some way. I love that. I mean, and that just really goes with our ethos, like, sort of here on in, on visibility is that I feel like when you see something, you can attach your mind to it and suddenly you can just aspire to be that. It's something really, really powerful Completely. about the, that kind of really strong visual. Completely. You know, we love that. <laughs> Okay, so you started in banking and then, but now you're in private equity and yes. a lot of people actually, for some reason, think that they're interchangeable. They're just uh, in space, no, but actually, no, they are not. Just help us like understand the differences, like what is it that you actually do in the space and yeah, how did sure. you get here? Yeah, sure. So, so I did my, so I, I was at Lehman in my first year of university and then in my third year of university, I did an internship at JP Morgan. Uh, and I got the offer uh, and you know like most Nigerian parents mm -hmm. they want you to do a master's and I said look I've got the offer I'm yeah. not doing a master's yeah. so I took a year out to kind of just do my own thing yeah. and within that year I did about a five-month internship mm -hmm. at TLG Capital okay. which is a private equity firm that invests in Anglophone Africa okay. so that's kind of what sparked my interest mm -hmm. so um, private equity firms also do internships well just like well again I'm because of my very persistent personality uh, the founder of TLG Capital is someone that I met uh, when I was uh, uh, applying to Goldman for internships. Ah. So he used to work at Goldman. So I got in touch with him and I said, you know, I'm taking this year out. I'd love to come and learn more about what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think because he admired my, <laughs> my, my, my gusto, he gave me the internship. But it's actually not typical for yeah. a private equity firm to yeah. do an internship. Yeah. So anyway, that's why I kind of generated the interest for private equity in Africa yeah. because I could I saw that I could kind of leverage my relationships in Nigeria to mm -hmm. find out more about companies and um, so that kind of sparked my yeah. interest but I was like you know I've got the offer from JP let mm -hmm. me go to JP let yeah. me go and do the institutional yeah, thing okay um, but I always kind of had at the back of my mind that private equity would be something that I wanted you want to, to do, do. Yeah. Um, so in my you know in my kind of coming up to the fourth year of banking um, I get a call from a headhunter and he's saying well you know you've got this company they're very active in Central and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking to, you know, build up an Africa business. Uh, and they're looking for a very specific profile. They're looking for someone that is local. Yeah. They're looking for someone that has m and experience. And they're looking for someone that has leverage finance experience. Ah, which you which had, I had at JP Morgan. Because yeah. through my JP Morgan experience, I started off in m and um, and they were doing rotations mm -hmm. where you could go to other product teams and I found myself in leverage finance and didn't move back to M&A because I enjoyed what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so that's how I founded myself, you know, in Syntaxis Capital Africa, which right. is where I am now. That's a much smaller firm. Much smaller than... firm, much smaller firm. And because we were actually building up a new business within mm -hmm. an organization, there was only, there's only three of us. Mm. <laughs> um, so, so how did you mentally... Adjust. Adjust because yeah, I mean, having a brand, working for a huge. I mean, I'm a I'm a brand whore, for lack of a better <laughs> word. I'm not just in bags, but I like like having the the name, the, the name. Yeah. You know, this is where I work, and yeah, you know yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. And, and obviously, having your big vehicle yeah. behind you. Yeah. There's there's so many benefits to Completely. that. The training, the people Completely. you meet, the bonuses, the, all that kind of stuff. Completely. But what was it that kind of where you said, okay, I'm going to leave all of this behind, and then jump ship to this little unknown yeah, no, that it's, maybe it's, might be doing good work no it's a very good point uh, and I think at that stage I just saw it as a challenge mm. I just saw it as okay well this is something where they've been successful in another geography yeah. I, I'll be I'll have the opportunity to go back to Nigeria and influence in some way yeah. markets in Nigeria yeah. so that's kind of what I thought and and uh, and 
I didn't really realize that I was kind of positioning myself for my purpose back yes. then. I think I just saw it as this is a challenge. Yeah. This is something where it's something new. Uh, you know, when you, there's a point in banking where you kind of have to decide yeah. if, you, if you're going to be in here for life or, or if you're going to go and do yeah. something else. And I was at that stage and I said, OK, well, let's let's take this on as a new opportunity mm. that gives me the, uh, the ability to leverage yeah. my relationships yeah. locally. So to answer your question about what is private equity, it's very different to mm -hmm. banking. Um, it is essentially investing in companies mm -hmm. um, that are, well, we do growth equity. So it's investing in companies that are already established. Right. They've already proven their business model and they're just looking for capital for to the take them phase. to the next right. stage. Right. Uh, and people have this misconception about private equity that, you know, you have to, you have, to have done banking to be mm -hmm. in private equity. What we're actually finding now in, in, for, in my company and what we're doing right now is, Finance people are only really half of the story. Yeah. You need operators. Yep. You need people that have actually sat in businesses, have ran, ran businesses, businesses yeah. have gotten their hands dirty. Because you find, and as I've found over the last four years uh, running this business, is doing deals in Nigeria is very, very doing different to doing yep. deals here. Um, companies sometimes lack the infrastructure. Companies sometimes lack the management skills. Mm -hmm. They lack that kind of organizational depth to be able to take on your institutional mm -hmm. capital. So things go wrong. You know, we're looking at a manufacturing business, power issues, logistics issues, route yeah. to market issues. So you don't need people like me that, you know, understand, you know, valuation and finance and structuring yeah. and due diligence. You need, who you has need the ground people knowledge. that have yeah. lived it. Yeah. Exactly. You need people that have lived it. So my advice to people thinking about going into private equity is, find where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be someone like me that's, you know, the person making the investment decisions or do you want to be someone adding value to companies right. operationally? Okay. So I think there is a misconception that private equity is only finance people yeah. and it doesn't have to be. You can be someone who, you know, maybe you've taken an interest in running businesses mm -hmm. before or you've, you know, sat in your family business doing, I don't know, day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. You could also be valuable to a private equity firm mm -hmm. like mine. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that you don't have to do banking. Uh, you can also be someone that can come on as an operator who's yeah. helping to add value to the businesses operationally mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Or you can, you know, go through the normal route yeah. of, uh, making sure you understand how to value companies, mm. making sure you understand, you know, how do you think about, you know, what makes this uh, investment attractive. Yeah. Um, so find your niche yeah. is what I would say. But it still does, it feels like private equity lends itself to people with more experience, more life experience. So how can yes. someone who is still young aspire to that or do they have to still go and do something else, whatever that might be, before they come in? Well, you're right. It, private equity is definitely an experienced game. Yeah. Um, and that's why people tend to hire from banks. <laughs> um, so I, I, I would say that, you know, as a young person, if you're thinking about going into private equity, you definitely have to put the work in. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would advise that if you want to be an investment professional in private equity, go and cut your teeth in banking. Um, you don't have to do the same route that I've done, but M&A definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, because it helps you understand how to think about value in companies. Yeah. It helps you understand what makes this company attractive. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely say the M&A route helps. Yeah. Um, not everyone can do M&A yeah. because of the long, long hours. hours and <laughs> I started M&A. I quickly kind of decided it's not so But it helps. I think yeah. at least a year in M&A, yeah. I think, sets, but I, I'm biased, <laughs> but I think it sets the right, right foundation yeah. for people going into anything in life yeah. uh, because it helps you with self-discipline and helps mm -hmm. you meet, you know, meeting deadlines. deadlines yeah. It helps you, you know, just thinking about more than yourself actually mm. in a very philosophical existential way. But, <laughs> but when, when you're in M and A, you don't have a life. So yeah. you are just working and making sure that you deliver on a, on a, on a timeline. Yeah. So I think everyone should do M and A, but yeah. I'm just biased. Yeah. <laughs> So how is your business now sort of impacting growth in in the region that you operate? Well, this is and this is why, you know, I, I, I this is why I made the comment about purpose, because what we're doing uh, is we're providing capital to companies that otherwise wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. So we're very much focused on the SME and lower mid cap segment. OK. Uh, and in a lot of our markets, especially in countries like Nigeria, 
these companies are typically overlooked by larger institutions. Right. So local banks, they want to lend to the telecoms, they want to lend to the yeah. oil and gas companies. If you're a manufacturing business that you know has been going for three years and you want to now increase capacity, it's very, very hard to raise capital. Mm -hmm. So a big part of you know why I think that God has called me to this yeah. is to provide capital to companies that otherwise wouldn't have it yeah and as our company and as our company grows and as we get more funds under management we will actually be impacting the financial ecosystem mm -hmm. in, the, in the countries that yeah. we're in um, so that's what gets me up every day yeah. <laughs> is that I'm actually going to be leaving an, a lasting impact on, in the financial ecosystems yeah. of Nigeria of Ghana, of Cote d'Ivoire, of Kenya, yeah. the countries that we're active in, because a lot of these companies are overlooked today. They're mm -hmm. ignored by you know large institutions that should be providing them with capital. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and 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 you know, I'm obviously I'm not a charity. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that we're doing money, this yeah. and, and able to also make money is you know impact with returns is always what I yeah. say, which which is which for me gives me a lot of fulfillment. Yeah. So Adesua, um you were talking about the work that you're doing it sounds really interesting but can you put it into like a practical like space for us so what are some of the projects or one project that for example you're really proud of that you can share yeah sure so so there's a company in Nigeria um, uh, and we actually haven't yet completed the investment but I think it's one that I'm proud of because it goes to exactly why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a company that has been in existence since the late 80s. Right. Uh, and, they're com and they're looking for growth capital. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, it just puts things into perspective because this is a 40-year-old business mm -hmm. that can't raise capital locally. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's something that, <laughs> it's, it's a disgrace because I'm thinking yeah. of it as a Nigerian, but obviously it presents us with an opportunity where we can provide this company with an investment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just under $10 million. Um, and it allows them to expand and bring in machinery mm -hmm. and increase their capacity. You know, they, they make, you know, um, hygiene products. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, everyday essential hygiene products. Yeah. Um, and that's really what, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, it's what really h helps me realize that what I'm doing is bigger than myself. Yeah. Because this company otherwise wouldn't have capital. Yeah. You know, the, the local banks have ignored them. The majority of the private equity funds that have raised money in Africa are targeting larger buyouts, mm -hmm. larger, you know, larger, larger investment sizes. So we are in a space where the growth capital that we provide counts. Yeah. It matters. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise these companies would, would be ignored. Yeah. Um, so this, this company is something that we're very proud of. We're able to, you know, bring in new machinery um, where where we've been able to also enhance their power solution as mm -hmm. well. As you know, power in Nigeria yeah. is a, is a, is a yeah. big is a big issue. Um, so yeah, so this is one that it's, it speaks to me, not only because it's a business that, you know, like our other countries, they typically wouldn't be able to get the capital, mm -hmm. but it's in Nigeria where I know the products. Yeah. So I, you know, I can't say the name of the business, yeah. but I know the products, I see the products on, on, on the on shelves. shelves. Yeah. Um, so it's also something that's close, close to me to as you. well. Yeah. Okay, so you've recently been promoted to MD and partner. Yes. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you. What, at 28, like, that is huge. Like, yeah. how do you do that? Like, I know, it, I don't even know. Like, it's just amazing. <laughs> I just think it's just phenomenal and just, yeah. you know, hugely um, inspirational. Yeah. But what was that like? Like, getting to partner, I know you talk about your persistence, so I'm sure that has a lot to do that with it. That does, yes. Kind of banging down the door. <laughs> yes, it does. But, you know, what does that look like? So do you now lead your team, you know, and then yeah. um, what are some of the challenges that you faced along the way? Yeah. Clearly, you've talked a lot about purpose, yeah. but that cannot come without its own challenges. For sure, so for sure. So, to, yeah. so, yeah, so um, when I came into the, this business four and a half years ago, well, actually, no, three and a half years ago, coming up to four years, apologies, um, a couple of things changed. So I was brought in to help lead the Africa business based on my experience at JP Morgan, based on my experience at TLG and, and everything. Um, and, you know, fundraising takes time. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, I thought, okay, well, we are part of this large organization that's been, uh, you know, that's been successful in another emerging mm -hmm. market. Now that we want to do something similar, it would be, a, it would be, you know, plain sailing. So you already came in in a leadership 
Well, kind position. of, yeah. yes, kind of, because I was working with the managing partner at the time um, to help build out this business. But what we found out very, very quickly is, you know, you can't just, you know, import <laughs> your track record from yeah. one geography Into to another. another. People expect you to, you know, already, you know, um, have a track record in the geography that you're active in. So yes, it's taking it's taking a long time to get to where we are now, mm -hmm. where you know we have commitments on the fund, and we're we're, we're going to be making start making investments very mm -hmm. very soon. But having that persistence, having that grit, mm -hmm. uh, ha making sure that you understand your why um, is, I think how I've got into where yeah. I am um, and obviously the grace of God as yeah. well um, you know I always give glory to God yeah. whenever I can because without him none of this of would course. be possible yeah. Um, but yeah it was it was really just you know navigating and making sure that I my voice was heard mm -hmm. throughout those three and a half years because you know if you don't speak up people will take advantage of you yeah. is what I found um, so I made it very, very clear throughout, you know, this journey that, you know, for us to be successful, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a team effort and everyone has to come together, but you also have to make it very, very clear the value that you're bringing Bring to, to, table, to, yeah. a, to, a, to an organization. So I think that's how I've got into where I am. Um, it was through persistence, making sure that you recognize your value and mm -hmm. you articulate it and mm -hmm. communicate it. Um, but also putting your money where your mouth is yeah. as well. Because as you know, to become a partner, you have to put it up. Yeah. You have to bring some money up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thank God I have a supportive husband. And thank God I have, uh, you know, a supportive you know, family and, yeah. and system where, you know, things don't just fall in your lap. You have to work for it. Yeah. And you also have to put your money where your mouth is. Um, so now I own the majority of the business. Wow. Um, uh, and, uh, and yes, I'm, 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 we're going to be hiring um, four additional people to join awesome. the business that will be based in Lagos and also Nairobi. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm navigating and learning every day, but it's very exciting because, yeah. um, you know, it's been a tough three and a half years yeah. um, getting to this stage, but thank God that, you know, he's been able to place us where we need to be. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're now able to, you know, you know, make, you know, make investments and, yeah. and we're able to, you know, make that impact with purpose yeah. that I mentioned. So ageism is, um, is an interesting thing because that's something that's very big. People don't talk about it a lot, but it's very huge in Nigeria and in Africa in general, but Nigeria in particular. Nigeria particularly. Ageism, the fact that you're Nigeria so young, people just think, what is she Small know? girl. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, small girl syndrome exactly. is everywhere. I'm just thinking, exactly. but my experience counts for something. Given exactly. that you're running your business, um, you know, in that region, yeah, yeah. how do you counter that? You walk into a room, everyone is expecting a man, a man. or okay, someone fine. older. They're at least expecting maybe someone who is black, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, and that's maybe, that may not be the issue, but they're expecting someone who at least maybe, first, first of all, who's a man, someone yeah. who's older. And then you walk in. It's, it's a very good point, and it's something <laughs> that I've had to deal with, and I still deal with yeah. now because. You know, people will tell you, like, you're too young to do this. You're too, you know, and, what experience and, do you have? What experience yeah. do you have? And I think that you just have to own your age. Yeah. And actually, it was, a, it, was, it was a woman that I respect very much that told me that. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually met her uh, a couple of, uh, couple of months ago. And she said, own your age. Um, because own your experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been very, very, you know, uh, fortunate to... Even though I'm so young, I started quite early, early and yeah. I've always been kind of a year ahead, uh, 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 ahead of myself. Um, yeah. So, you know, I have $5.6 billion of transactions wow. under my belt. So own your age and articulate your experience and uh, articulate your track record mm. where if people, you know, are, you know, being ageist, yeah. <laughs> you have something to back it up with. Yeah. Yeah, you um, can say that, but look at my, my exactly. CV. Exactly, look at the CV yeah. speaks for itself. The experience speaks for itself. Yeah. But you will always, you will always counter that, especially yeah. in Nigeria. You know, where we're actually currently raising money locally as well. Okay, uh, and you know, I walk into a room. And they're like, ah, your are you, partners. Are, we, are, we the ones, are you coming you? alone? Are you, are you here alone? Where are your partners? But then we get into the presentation, and they're like, ah, okay, uh, yeah. you know, because they see that the experience speaks for itself. So I would just say, own your age, uh, but also, you know, make sure you've you, you have something to back it up yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because some people are ageist, and sometimes they have a reason to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, own your age and articulate your experience, and never never let people 
tell you that you can't do something mm-hmm. because of your age mm-hmm. uh, uh, and I'm negatively motivated I am as well <laughs> so, when, so when people tell me I can't do something yeah, it, just exactly spurs, what, yeah, yeah. it just spurs me on even more but you're right it's something that I've had to deal with my yeah. whole life I'm, I'm the youngest person in the boardroom the only black person in the boardroom yeah. and the only woman wow, in the boardroom so it's a, it's a trifecta <laughs> But, uh, but thank God for his grace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so you've talked a lot about persistence in terms of a core skill. And that's always a question I always ask is what's, what's a core like value mm. that you hold? And I know persistence would be it. So I would um, drag that on. Yeah. But I think what I, what I wanted to ask was what are some of the routines that you have in place to just make sure like life is ticking? So obviously you, you do a lot of traveling, yes. uh, but you live in the UK, you have, you have family, you have a husband, you have your parents and all of that. How do you just kind of balance all of that with the work that you're doing? Gosh, uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Even getting you on here was like, <laughs> I, okay, I, she's busy. I, like, don't, know. I don't know because I, I'm traveling so much. Yeah. Um, uh, work is, you know, but the thing is when you own your business, Work never stops. Yeah, it never stops. Um, so, so yeah, it's just it just becomes part of your daily. Yeah. You know, your emails at midnight, emails at six a.m. Yeah. It just never stops. Um, so I don't know. I think I think what keeps me centered is I have you know a very supportive husband. Um, that that helps. I mm-hmm. think I have a very very also supportive you know uh, system in terms of my family, family. Um, which which really helps and keeps me kind of centered and grounded. But also my relationship with God as yeah. well and my yeah, faith, faith uh, yeah. is something that also helps. Because yeah. someone was asking me the other day, they're like, "How how have you managed to do this? Like three and yeah. a half years, yeah. and how have you managed to do this? How do you you know what? How did you not quit?" Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, my faith is something that yeah. really helped with that. Um, because when you understand that you are called to something that's bigger, bigger. than you. Yeah. Uh, and that your life is just really a, a testament to, so that you can, you know, share and not to get too religious, mm. but testify of to God's glory yeah, to yeah, other people. Yeah. Then it, it keeps you going. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know. I would say that I don't really have a specific routine. Yeah. I just have a very supportive husband. <laughs> Uh, a very supportive family yeah. uh, and my my relationship with god keeps me centered yeah so what is next for you would end on that point what is you know what is what do you want to leave behind what's your leg i mean this is all obviously legacy <laughs> creating amazing stuff yeah but what is that thing that in 10 years time you want people to really be thinking about when you think about you Poof. i, I don't know that's a hard one I, I think i just i want my legacy to be the impact that I've had with this business yeah. on the countries that we're in and, and just being able to provide capital to companies that don't have it. But I also want my legacy to be, you know, being able to inspire the uh, the next generation yeah. of, of people that are thinking about coming into finance, especially black women yeah. that, are, that are thinking about coming into finance. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you look around when you're in banking, you don't really see many people like you. Yeah. In all the teams I, I, I was in in yeah. banking, I was the only black woman yeah. uh, in my organization right now. Mm-hmm. I'm hiring one black woman, but currently I'm the only black woman. Um, so, yeah, I think I just want to I just want to be able to show people that are thinking about going into mm. finance, especially black women, that it's possible to have a successful marriage, have a good career, <laughs> uh, and yes, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, I would say that that's what I want to leave behind. Awesome. <laughs> so how can our audience um, get in touch with you if there are people who have been maybe inspired, and I know, I'm sure they will be, but inspired by this and they want to just connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Um, the best way is send me a message on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, and I will definitely respond. Okay. Because so that's Adesua Okumbo. Yes, okay. Adesua Okumbo on LinkedIn. Um, send me a message. And I'm always happy to hear people's stories, give any advice that I can. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, get in touch with me on LinkedIn. <laughs> We would love to organize an event literally around you so that people can just get a group of really young girls who are so inspired and just, um, no, I'd just love come that. and talk to you. I love that. I love thank that. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. <laughs> Thanks.